congratulations again on completing the first exercise. To go further, you will need to learn a little of the theory of computer programming. The videos that accompany the exercises will introduce everything that you need to know, however. This video in particular is going to teach you a little about variables. Before we get on to that, though, let's first briefly think about what you did during the exercise. To do the exercise, you dragged and dropped blocks containing instructions into this part of the screen. You then pressed the Show Code and Run Code buttons in that order, and the computer went away and ran the commands that you had entered. The net result of running these commands was that a point appeared here in the plotting window. To be clear, this is what you will do in all of the Blockly exercises that we will do during this call. You will use blocks entered in this part of the window to give commands to the computer, and the results from these commands will be displayed in this part of the window. The commands that you enter in the block in the box on the right of the page will thus change something about the appearance of the plot on the left of the screen. Now, you may well ask, what is the purpose of the show code and run code buttons? Why, you may ask, do I have to press show code? Why can't I simply run the code directly once I have dragged and dropped my blocks into place? Why do I have to press the show code button here first and then close the pop-up window? before running the code. The reason for this is that the aim of these exercises is not to teach you how to code using blocks. Ultimately, I want you to write programs using a proper programming language called Python. The blocks are merely a mean to this, means to this end. By using them, I can hopefully get you to focus on what we are trying to get the computer to do, rather than focusing on the particular details of the Python programming language. As you will need to use Python later, however, I have made this app show you how the blocks would be translated into Python code, so that when you come to use this language later on in the course, you can have some idea as to how to reproduce what you did with the blocks. When these pop-ups appear then, don't simply close them without looking at the Python code. Instead, copy the Python code that is generated into some notes that you are making somewhere so that you are ready for the pure Python exercises that will come later in the course. With this explanation in place, let's now return to this business of variables and what this program is doing. As I explained before, what we have seen from this very first exercise is that the commands that you enter in the box on the right of the page will change something about the appearance of the workspace on the left of the screen. Let's simplify this idea now by introducing a different workspace that does something similar. On the left of the screen, I now have an empty box. On the right, I have the command set to 3. When I execute this command, a 3 is put inside my empty box, as shown here. In programming term, this command changes the state of the box. Furthermore, if I now give the command set to 5, the state of what is inside the box will change once more, and the 3 that is inside the box currently will be replaced with a 5. Let's now suppose that instead of having one box, I have many boxes, and that instead of representing the state using a number, we represent the state using the box's colour. In the images shown below, all our boxes are thus in the blue state. Now let's suppose that we want to change the second of the boxes shown here to the red state. Obviously, we cannot simply use the command set to red anymore, as there are five things we, ch we could change. The command set to red thus does not contain enough information to tell the computer what precisely you would like to do. On its own, this command could be instructing us to change the state of one of the boxes, all of the boxes, or the two boxes that have been changed in the movie shown here. What we thus need to do is introduce a label for each of the various boxes that we have. For example, we can label the first box A, the second B, and so on, as shown here. We can then do what was shown in the movie by issuing the two commands, set B to red and set D to red, 
as shown at the bottom of the slide. When these commands are issued, there is no longer ambigu any ambiguity about what the computer program is supposed to do. What we have introduced here is the notion of a variable. A variable in computer program is simply a labeled address that has a state that we can set using a set command like the, those shown here. The label of the address will not change in the course of our program, but the state of the variable, the particular value it takes, may change as the program executes. To make this concrete, let's give some more examples of how we can use variables, but this time let's set the state of these variables to numbers as this is more normal in the computer programs that we will be running during this course. Here I have two example variables, b and d, and I've set the states of these variables to 2 and 5. What I've written here is not valid Python, however. The Python version of these two commands is shown here. As you can see, within Python, the equal sign is used to set the state of variables. So the command b equals 2 tells the computer to set the state of a variable called b to 2, while the command d equals 5 tells the computer to set the, the state of the variable called d to 5. Notice that the equal sign command here does not mean quite the same thing as it means in mathematics. In mathematics, we use the equal sign to indicate that two quantities are always equal within our proof. Here, however, the equal sign is used to momentarily set the state of a variable to a particular value. The program shown here, in which b is set equal to 2 before being set equal to 5, is a perfectly valid Python script. As a mathematical proof, however, it is complete nonsense. We are now in a position to understand why programming languages and variables are so useful. They are useful because most of the useful programming languages allow us to write programs that are composed largely of arithmetic expressions that involve variables. Start with this one. In fact, one of the first real computer, language, computer programming languages, Fortran, was named precisely because it transformed arithmetic formulas into machine code that the computer could understand. Fortran is short for formula translation. Why, though, is all this useful, you may ask? Your calculator can perform all the calculations you require, and you don't need to learn anything about variables in order to exploit it. The answer to this question is that if you have a computer program, it can be used to repeat the same operations a large number of times. For example, suppose that you have a large number of values for angles, and that the values of these angles are in degrees, and that you are not a Babylonian, but are instead a mathematician. A mathematician would report these angles in radians, a short... We can write a short program to exploit the fact that 1 degree is equal to pi over 180 radians as follows. The program shown here does the following. It takes in the value of the angle in degrees from somewhere. It sets the state of a variable called pi equal to 3.14159265359 which is the value of pi it, sets, it calculates the value of the angle in radians by using the formula that is in the definition above, and then it prints out the value of the angle in radians. Now, you could do all this with your calculator, but if you are converting 1,000 angles, entering the formula on the third line of this program into your calculator every time is going to be a pain. It is thus convenient to have this little program. Furthermore, I hope this simple example has convinced you that it is not that difficult to write these sorts of programs. To summarize the content of this video then, we have in, in this video introduced the notion of a variable. We have explained that a variable is an address in the computer's memory that has a, a label in our program and a state. The state is simply the value the variable takes and we can set the state of a variable by using a command involving an equal sign. Lastly, we've discussed how we can use arithmetic variables within arithmetic expressions and can thus program a computer to calculate quantities. In, the next, in this next exercise, you will use a variable in an expression to consolidate these ideas. Good luck.